that is per liter. So today, I think we're going to be talking about the F550 versus the F450. A lot of people don't know, but there's some differences besides GVWR and uh, and springs and axles and that. But we'll start talking about that after I go broke from pumping this fuel. So this is something I've always kind of wanted to talk about was the difference between the 450 and the 550, mainly the cabin chassis versus the non-cabin chassis. So cabin chassis means the bed, truck bed, the pickup bed on the truck versus the cabin chassis, which is just the cab, the passenger cab, and then bare chassis on the back. And for those of you who don't know, the reason we'd have a cabin chassis is if you're gonna put a box truck on, truck on it, the, like a big box, you know, like the Lay's trucks that goes around, um, they're usually 550s, you know, big Lay's printing on the side. Uh, or if you wanna make a dump truck out of it, so uh, in the back, instead of a bed, you have a dump, right, which can take a lot of dirt, gravel, trees, whatever, and it can dump it. Um, some people, you know, you're gonna put a, uh, flap it on it for towing cars, stuff of that nature anyways. And and that's why you'd, you'd, you'd have a cabin chassis. Now, I'm gonna talk about the main dis differences. I'm also gonna talk about the F350. Uh, but basically, something a lot of people don't know is that there is mechanical, big, kind of significant mechanical differences between the cabin chassis, you know, 450, 550, and the regular pickups. The main differences, and this is what I wanted to talk about, is they've actually shrunk the turbo. So they come with a smaller turbo, and they're detuned. Now detuning, that's not a big deal. You can plug something into it, get it retuned for whatever horsepower you want. Um, same deal if you have a pickup, it, you know it's going to be used hard or used by other people. You can have it detuned so that it's just easier on the temperatures, transmissions, motors, everything like that. Um, so yeah, so it's detuned, limited to 2800 RPM. Um, excuse me, 2600 RPM. So the 6.7 power stroke makes its power at 2800 peak power. After that it drop off, drops off pretty quick. And, uh, and yeah, these ones, they're limited to 2600. And that goes for the 550s, 650s, 750s, whatever. Uh, they're on 600s. They're all, they're all F550 and up. They're all detuned. So, what this does is the detuning on the smaller turbo. It doesn't output as much power. So when you're to the floor all the time, it'll get you to where you need to go, but you won't be laboring the motor like crazy. So the reason you'd want this stuff detuned is because when you're flat out to the floor all the time, it generates a lot of heat and heat is friction. Heat is basically stuff wearing out. Um, you risk, especially when you start loading these trucks and working them hard, you risk breaking stuff, breaking gears in the trans, breaking drive axles. Uh, you can just break a lot of stuff. You know, you can even spin tires. Like these trucks are crazy. Um, the, the power that these things have is is not even fit for one axle. You know, this should be in a transport truck with with tandems. It's uh, insane what these trucks put out. And no, they do not need all this all this power. For those of you guys who know what I tow, the sheer amount of shit that I tow, you'll also know in these videos that I only run it at you know half throttle. You know, I run this truck harder when I'm empty because. It doesn't matter, they can they can handle it just fine, but when you're putting out a thousand fifty foot pounds of torque, four or five hundred horsepower, um, and you're pulling up a steep grade, you know, doing 30, 40 kilometers an hour, pulling 35, 36,000 pounds, you know, something's got to give, something's going to give eventually. Um, that's a lot of power and all that strain, you know, the road's not going to break. Your engine's probably not gonna break, but everything in between very well may break. So that's why they have it detuned. These trucks, you know, a lot of people that, that own 450s and especially 350s, you're towing campers, you know, you're towing your your, your toy haulers, your, your boats, stuff like that, 15, maybe 20,000 pounds max. Um, 
or you know even the occasional 30,000 pounds it's still not going to equal up to what work trucks do like this one on a daily basis so those trucks they don't need to be detuned but when you're putting up a fleet you know you don't want you don't want these trucks to be overly powerful because they will destroy themselves so you know if these trucks are going to be at their max capacity all the time and you know you want to put especially those young crappy workers that don't give a shit about your equipment you want them you want you want it to be derated to just take care of the the whole system so lower rpm smaller turbo you're not going to be putting out as much power and uh, and that that's that's the gist of it it's harder to break things when you have less power not everyone well very rarely do you have people that'll hold themselves back from flattening the throttle uh, just to see how fast they can go up a 12% uh, towing 30,000 pounds because because you can because it's fun that's not what you want um, and most people will do that so but it's not all it's not all sunshine and rainbows having a detuned truck with a smaller turbo those trucks are known to have a few more issues especially with turbos going out and uh, just issues that I've heard of here and there um, they can be a little bit more problematic but still part of that is from being ran so hard but no matter what if you have a smaller motor smaller transmission smaller anything and you run at full capacity all the time it's going to suffer damage a lot sooner than if you had something huge and ran it you know half power like I do with this truck you know running it you know limited to 2600 rpm uh, you know I think they're limited to around 300 horsepower 350 maybe um, the torque is like 600 700 foot pounds of torque and those um, I will make sure that's correct but uh, but you're gonna be running the thing a lot harder and the turbo is just gonna have to do the work it's gonna have to make up for uh, you know its loss of output and it's gonna have to try and make up for the, the detuning and this thing's gonna be working a lot harder and the turbo is gonna be spinning faster and it's, it's just gonna wear out faster so that's why I don't opt for the cabin chassis is because I'd rather have for one I'd rather have a pickup box um, but two I'd rather have all the output there and detune it myself with my right foot if I don't need that power and towing you never do I let it off I gear down if I'm pulling up a hill doing 20 30 in second gear I don't give a shit I'll get there eventually pushing the truck full throttle is not gonna get me anywhere any faster but now if I put someone else in this truck I know damn well it's gonna be to the floor the entire way because why the hell not so that was the big thing I wanted to get out of the way I've even spoken to dealerships uh, that didn't know the difference they had no idea that the cabin chassis you know they'd ask me what why don't you get the cabin chassis if you're commercial and I'd have to explain to them that these things are derated and they have more issues than just the regular ones and uh, that me driving the truck I don't need it I don't need a derated truck I don't want a derated truck but yeah a lot of these people don't know that which is really surprising um, obviously I'm not talking about Olivier Ford who provided this truck in a, in a, in a sponsorship deal um, they know especially Antoine he knows everything about these trucks they will know the difference and they will get you set up with the right truck but I'm uh, absolutely amazed by the amount of people that just have no idea that the cabin chassis are derated smaller turbo and a few other small differences on the inside so aside from that there's also a few more differences so as you go up 350 450 and 550 you're getting different axle packages I believe the front axle is the same in the 450 and the 550 but in the 350 you're getting a regular a regular width axle um, I don't need I don't think it's beefed up or anything and on the 450 you're getting a wide track front axle now correct me if I, I might be wrong about this but I'm pretty sure I'm not all the wide track front axle is is a regular f350 axle with a spacer in it to make it wider but this is what it does the wider axle gives you more turning radius more stability better tire wear in some cases it's uh, it's amazing the difference it'll make and even you know two two and a half years into the ownership of this truck I sometimes turn around and just say wow look at that turning radius and uh, all of my passengers can relate it is 
truly amazing every time I do it. I love it. Definitely worth it over the 350. So that's something, that's a big difference. The 550 also comes with the uh, wide track front, front axle. Um, another thing a lot of people don't know is that the 350 and the 450 have the same GVWR. So the GVWR of the 350 is 14,000 and I was surprised when I looked at the door sticker on this 450, it was also 14,000 GVWR. Now, can the 450 haul a lot more safely? Yes. Uh, just the tires on it and the wider front suspension, stuff like that, just makes for a better towing truck overall. But at least in my F350 and this 450 here, the leaf springs, the leaf pack, exactly the same. The suspension seems to be exactly the same. I do find the brakes to be better in this 450, a bit more grabbier. They're definitely lasting a bit longer, but I'm not even 100% sure it has better brakes. So. So that's something you're going to have to watch out for is if you need more GVWR, you're going to need to go for a 550. Now the 550 bumps you up from 14,000 to around 16 or 17,000, um, which is a nice upgrade. And uh, you're getting better tires, beefier suspension, but it's also going to be rougher. So for those, for those of you who like doing high mileage, you know, you, you like using the trucks a lot, Okay, basically for anyone uh, that, you know, you, you don't need to run the uh, the regular non-commercial tires, you want to get a 450. Better turning radius all around and, and the same suspension, same everything. You're getting better tires, longer lasting tires. You, if, if, you, if you don't tow very much, you will never replace the tires on your 450. And, and that, that's, that's amazing. The 350... Same thing as the 450, but shit turning radius, shittier brakes, and shittier tires. Enough said. The 550, you're getting that extra GVWR, you're getting bigger brakes, and you're getting a bigger leaf pack. Now, it's also going to ride like dog shit. It's going to ride like a ton of bricks. You know, you're going to fret every time you see a pothole incoming, and the truck's probably going to bounce out for the next kilometer. But loaded should be exactly the same that's what they're meant they're meant to be worked these trucks are all meant to be worked but the 550 you're going to want it loaded so those are the differences that i've picked up over the years um so to sum it all up don't get the 350 that's garbage um <laughs> i mean it's a good truck but compared to the other ones just pay the extra three or four thousand dollars to get a 450 the 450 great for high mileage great for pretty much everything all around looks way better than the 352 with that wide track front axle it just looks like a bigger truck looks way better the 550 or the 450 cabin chassis that's what you're going to want if you're you know sending people out in these trucks you're working them hard you just want to you know you're you, you know these trucks are going to get beaten you want a detuned truck and you know of course if you want to throw anything on the back other than a pickup bed uh, that's just that's just the easy, easiest way to go you're also going to want uh, a 550 if you know you're towing a lot of weight you know you're towing heavy equipment all the time like i arguably should have a 550 but like i said having a properly like originally tuned truck with the bigger turbo was worth more to me so if you're but if you're towing heavy especially not going far you're just going around town stuff like that the 550 is just going to be a better truck overall you don't need to push them as hard the detuning was going to make everything last longer and stop and go it's just going to be a better truck overall for working. And uh, and yeah, 550. And then as you go up from the 550, you're just getting into different weight ratings. I'm going to do a video of the 550 and the 600. That's a pretty cool thing there. They actually make an F600 now. And it's like a morph between. It's like the F550 cab with the F650 everything else kind of. It's pretty cool. But, uh, but yeah, I hope that's helpful. I hope that helps you decide on, on what truck to get. You know, 350, 450, and 550. Um, what's better for your business? What's better for your use case? What's better for towing your friggin' camper? Even if you're towing a little Lund aluminum boat, um, you know, 450, you can't go wrong. I mean, if you just want the most badass truck, you can't go wrong. Guys, I hope this was an enjoyable video. I hope you enjoyed the drone shots. Check out Olivier Ford if you want a truck. 
check out uh, Danger Underscore Industries if you want to see cool truck pictures and updates. And email the email down below, callenpool at yahoo.ca, if you want paddle shifters uh, to shift the truck in manual mode, you know, going up hills and stuff, going down hills, you want to get the engine brake working hard, you need one of those. So guys, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next one. You guys, guys have a good day.